and welcome to Conversations with Robin. On today's program, we have two people from Greenpeace. We have Louise Sales. Louise is a genetically engineering campaigner. That's right. Is that how I say it? My gen genetic engineering campaigner. That's yeah. the one. <laughs> and also Paul Hanley. And Paul, you're a volunteer coordinator. That's right, Robin. I coordinate the volunteers that uh, work in our office. Okay. And thank you both so much for coming on because sometimes I think what we hear about organisations like Greenpeace is often a bit slanted as being either too controversial or too, what's the word I'm after? Confronting. Too confronting. Thank you, Paul. Yes. So if I can just ask you first, and I'll start with you, Louise, what is Greenpeace's mandate? What is Greenpeace about? Well, Greenpeace is an environmental NGO, and so we campaign on four main issues. We campaign on oceans, forests, climate change and genetic engineering in Australia. So we're there to make the case for the environment and to, to lobby both companies and, and governments to make environmental improvements. Okay. And you actually have been with Greenpeace for 20 years, odd. Well, I first got involved with Greenpeace when I was 16 as, wow. yeah, as a member of my local group. Mm -hmm. And um, I've kind of come and gone <laughs> from the organisation of the years, but I've been working with Greenpeace for the last two years in, in Australia. Okay. And for you, Paul, how long have you been involved with Greenpeace? Um, I became involved with Greenpeace about eight years ago about the remediation of Homebush Bay and the Rhodes Peninsula, which was all heavily contaminated with uh, dioxins and other chemicals. And through that I met uh, numerous of uh, Greenpeace campaigners in the toxics area. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of uh, about five years of doing that, I happened to be letterboxing with one of the Greenpeace toxics campaigners and he told me about a little accounting job that was going at Greenpeace. and. Um, my money was running a bit low and I thought I should apply for it and um, unfortunately I didn't get the job but they rang me about a month later and asked me if I could come in and help out for a month and uh, I've been there about uh, three and a half years now. Okay. Let's have a chat first perhaps about the genetically engineered food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. Hey? It's it a is, bit of a mouthful. It is a mouthful when the person's not used to it. <laughs> Because that's such a big, a big issue at the moment, and has been in Australia, especially as we speak. What's been happening at the moment in Australia with GE? Yeah, so basically, um, just just over yeah, it was just a week ago, and the New South Wales and Victorian state governments announced that they'd be lifting their bans on GE food crops mm -hmm. next year. So that means that if, if unless they change that decision, we're going to have um, GE food crops grown in our fields as early as next year which we're obviously deeply concerned about. Now the state government's been saying that farmers can have the choice whether they want to grow G canola or not, which is the crop that, that will be grown. Um, but from what we've seen in Canada where G canola has been introduced, there is that there's no choice. There's no choice for, for farmers because contamination is inevitable. Um, farmers who want to grow non-G canola have been den denied that choice in Canada because of cross-contamination and also consumers have been denied the choice to eat GE free food because because of the inevitable contamination as well so it's, it's a real problem and and we find the government's decision quite alarming given that polls consistently show the majority of consumers don't want to eat GE food the majority of farmers don't want to grow them and major major companies have said they don't want it <laughs> our export mar markets such as Japan and Europe have said they don't want it so it's really quite a disturbing decision and, and one that we're obviously calling on the state governments to reverse. Mm, because this is actually pretty much around the planet, isn't it? That consumers, first and foremost, about 75%, is that roughly the figure, are saying they do not want the GE type food. For those of us that really haven't got a good grasp on what it is, what it means, can you, in, a, in a simple terms, tell us what it actually is? means. You know, what is GE food? Yeah, so the biotechnology industry has been arguing that gen genetic engineering is essentially the same as what we've been doing for years, selectively breeding plants, but it's actually a radically different technology. What genetic engineering does is it takes genes from, from one plant and puts them into another one. So you're, you're creating gene genetic sequences that have never existed before in nature. So you can, for example, take genes from a fish as has been done and, and put them into a tomato. And it's based on a really primitive understanding of genetics that has since been proven to be 
to be wrong. <laughs> I mean, genes actually uh, work in much more complex ways than, than we previously thought, which calls into question the whole science behind genetic engineering, but also the safety of genetically engineered foods. And, and there's known documented environmental problems associated with the technology as well, which is what, obviously the main reason why Greenpeace is campaigning against it. Okay. Now, there's been a very good... Um uh, DVD documentary. What was what's the name of that that's been out there for Is a while? It the the future of food. The that's future of food. What's that documentary about? So the future of food. It's a it's a US film, but it's as relevant to to Australia. It's looked at the experience of of farmers in no, in North America and their experiences with widespread contamination where G crops have been grown. It looks at the health risks of genetically engineered foods and. One of the major problems with genetically engineered foods that the documentary outlines is that there's been no long-term health studies about the potential health impacts of eating genetically engineered foods. And those studies that have been done have given ample cause for concern. So, for example, there was a study um, done on rats um, where they fed them genetically engineered corn. Now, this is a variety that's been approved for human consumption, and they, they found evidence of liver and kidney toxicity in the rats, but there's been no follow-up studies to see what the implications could be for, for people that eat the corn. They've, the regulators have just rubber-stamped it as safe, so that's available on supermarket shelves now, mm. so, which is really quite alarming. So we're obviously calling on, on the federal government to review those assessments because it's, it's not clear that genetically engineered food is safe and it shouldn't be on our supermarket shelves while there's any doubt as to the safety of it. And um, with that, um, on that, that documentary, they were talking there about um, there's a particular company out there that has something like, I think it was 10 or 50,000 patents on seed, mm -hmm. which means they are the only ones that are allowed to, to sell those seeds that in some instances farmers aren't allowed to utilise the seed from their own crops, is that correct, to, to uh, grow future crops? Yeah, that's right. So that's the real agenda here. Um, over the past few years we've seen a huge buy-up of all the seed companies. Mm -hmm. So now there's only about four companies in the world are responsible. They're, they own basically 90% of all the seed in the world. And it's these yeah, big companies that are pushing pushing this agenda. So one of the things that genetically engineered crops do is it means because of patent laws, farmers can no longer save their seed, which is particularly important in developing countries. Farmers can't afford to buy new seed every year, but what genetic engineering does, um, it means that farmers do have to buy this they, they have to buy new seed every every year because these companies own the, own the patents, and if they're caught growing seed that's contaminated with genetically engineered crops, even if they don't want them there, they can get sued for patent infringement, which is what's happened happened in the US and Canada, where there's farmers have been fined billions of dollars for patent infringement for GE crops that they didn't even want growing in their farms. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a major concern. Yeah, it's actually absolutely a huge issue, isn't mm -hmm. it?